الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I would like to uh, welcome you all to Ikna Dawa Conference 2020 Islam the, the solution in times of confusion um, Inshallah we have uh, I will be your host for the session uh, titled the golden ticket and we have an amazing lineup of speakers um, to address the topic asking listening and responding da'wah through conversation uh, just a, a quick introduction for uh, dr. Shabir Ali he holds uh, religious uh, degrees in religious studies with specialization in biblical literature and Quranic tafsir exegesis he's the president of the Islamic information and da'wah center international in Toronto where he functions as the Imam and uh, mashallah he's very well respected and uh, one of the more uh, well-recognized names in the field of Dawa. He travels extensively internationally to give uh, dialogues and uh, lectures for interfaith. And uh, is also an author for numerous books on Islam and Abrahamic faith. So, inshallah, Dr. Shabir Ali, please take over. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you all for having uh, me on this platform. Uh, I'm delighted, I'm honored, uh, and I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thank him. I say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salawatullahi wa salam wa ala khatim al wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. And uh, I'm so honored to be on the panel with Dr. Ingrid Matson. I listened to her with care and with uh, Imam uh, Khalid Griggs. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy to uh, connect with uh, all of those uh, who are viewing from the safety of their homes. That introduction um, that was just read off obviously was composed pre-COVID-19 and um, you know COVID-19 is nothing to laugh about but uh, you know to say that I'm traveling extensively that that no longer applies and uh, but we do hope and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift this uh, virus from the earth uh, the, the virus that causes COVID-19 and he will protect all of us uh, and our loved ones uh, and the entire world from COVID-19 and from every other sickness and disease and distress and uh, stress. I'm going to try and time myself here uh, as I go because I, I recall Dr. Matson saying that the time goes by so fast and I want to make sure that uh, I stick within the time as well. But you know what, uh, for me to see my timer, I have to put my glasses on. I'm getting old now and um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> So, uh, da'wah through conversation. The Quran tells us, uh, uh, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. That is in Surah 16, verse 125. I'll stop there because I don't want to get to the part about uh, and argue with them in the way that is uh, uh, most gracious uh, because I don't want to focus on the jidal part or the argumentation part, but I want to just focus on the conversational part. Now, in the Quran, the word hiwar is, is used uh, for conversation. Uh, and we see, for example, in Surah Al-Kaf uh, that uh, uh, there were two persons, uh, one giving da'wah to the other. Uh, the the uh, one who had his garden and everything supplied for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala felt proud and uh, didn't give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he uh, had uh, received in terms of the blessings from Allah. And his uh, friend uh, says to him, so, so uh, you know, why don't you uh, uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give thanks to him? And uh, they, so the way the Quran called, uh, puts it is like this, uh, So his, his uh, friend said to him, while having this conversation with him. So there's there's an input here for us to think about our conversations with other people and how we might use that effectively in da'wah. In the Quran, it is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens uh, to uh, the conversation that went on between a woman who came to complain to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, Allah says, Wallahu yasma'u tahawurakuma. Allah hears your conversation, your dialogue. So this lady was having a dialogue with the Prophet peace be upon him and may Allah be pleased with her and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he's listening so the idea of having a conversation and of listening is very much Quranic but uh, often we uh, don't apply these principles 
Now, uh, others will say a lot of things to us, and uh, the, the Quran mentions this often, waqalu. In fact, uh, the, uh, the term waqalu, or qalu, just simply qalu, they say, uh, occurs in the Quran 332 times. That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeating what the other uh, people are saying about us or to us or to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the questions and objections that uh, they are putting forward. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the answer to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know that uh, many uh, times uh, the word qul occurs in the Quran in the singular form. That is a direct address to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell the others. So for example, qul ya ayyuhal kafirun say, oh you uh, who deny faith, and uh, uh, say, he is Allah, one. So in these uh, passages, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directing our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to address the questions of the non-believers by telling them that these are, are the answers to your questions. Often the questions are directly stated, uh, for example, yes, alunak, they ask you, and then their question is mentioned, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them this. So the whole Quran is actually a conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and human beings, and uh, it reports the conversation of the great prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with uh, their people throughout history. Uh, so the Quran is a wonderful book of conversation. And yet, uh, we Muslims are not very good conversationalists. I will like to, I, I, I want to introduce uh, you to a book, which many of you probably read uh, already, because this is a very old book, uh, but it's, you know, it's a classic, entitled How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Uh, I read this when I was a young man, and I just picked it up in preparation for this uh, event again uh, last night, and, and I realized what gems are, are in this book. I mean, I've always known that, but uh, it just became uh, more fresh in my memory. It became fresher now that I'm looking at it. So one of the chapters in this book is about the art of conversation. And uh, Carnegie uh, says that uh, to you know a good conversationalist is really a good listener if you if you're with somebody and you're listening to them attentively uh, and and uh you know, you're responding to what they're saying, you're show, showing that you're involved in, in, in what they have to say about themselves, uh, then uh, they will classify you as a good conversationalist, even if you said nothing. Um, and uh, he pointed out something very important that, uh, you know, th uh, it, the person you're talking to, that person's toothache uh, may be a, a more important uh, than an earthquake that is uh, uh, causing devastation in another part of the world. So you want to talk about that earthquake, but but that person want to talk about his or her toothache. So if you want to have a good conversation with that person, you have to uh, be patient and and listen to that person talking about his or her toothache, and you have to show empathy uh, for what that person is going through. Don't distract uh, from from what that person is thinking about by saying, "Okay, you know, uh, your toothache means nothing because you know people are dying all over the world." Uh, that that's just a turn off. It ends the conversation right there. Uh, they're not going to listen to anything else that you have to say. Uh, I am uh, pleased uh, to present another book, which is uh, entitled The Secrets of Dialogue and uh, Persuasion, uh, written by a Muslim, Sulaiman ibn Awad uh, Qayman, available where Muslim books are generally sold, like in mosque, uh, uh, append uh, bookshops appended to, to mosques. Uh, now, uh, despite uh, these books and despite our general awareness of the need for conversation, uh, in using conversation in da'wah uh, has uh, not been so very prominent. We think of da'wah as mainly preaching to others. And yes, there is scope for preaching. Uh, we can listen to Dr. Ingrid Matson for hours as she expounds Islam on a public stage. Uh, but uh, most of us are not public speakers, uh, but we can be good conversationalists. We will uh, in, in, we encounter people when we travel. We, we will encounter people... Uh, uh, when we are at work or, or in our neighborhood or in schools. Uh, so we, we have many opportunities to uh, convey a message to those people. Uh, so we can seize the opportunities provided by uh, conversation to insert uh, something. Now, uh, our Christian friends apparently have uh, uh, thought about uh, 
how to do this. So uh, in in uh, in a quick Google search, uh, I I typed in uh, questions to ask non-Muslims, and uh, I I got a lot of responses saying these are the questions that non-Muslims uh, will ask Muslims, and, and this is the response that we have to get. But I didn't find on the first page. Uh, anything that said these are the questions that Muslims should ask non-Muslims. On the on the other hand, I found uh, a a hit that uh, said these are questions that Christians should ask Muslims. And this is how it goes. It says, okay, question number one: Ask the Muslim, uh, what 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 do you think is the is the biggest sin? And the Muslim will tell you. The Muslim might tell you the biggest sin is shirk or murder or something. And then the Christian should reply. Uh, well, do you know that Jesus died for our sins? <laughs> so you see, this is how they're teaching. Now, the second question, ask the Muslim, uh, did you ever encounter a jinn? And, and listen to their jinn stories. And then uh, when they're done, tell them, uh, do you know that uh, Jesus, uh, while he was here on earth, conquered evil spirits? So we don't have to be afraid of evil spirits, you see? So so they have a, uh, they're thinking about how to give dawah to Muslims by using the opportunity uh, provided in conversation. Now, let me offer a caveat here. If we're going to turn this around and say, okay, let's uh, use conversation uh, as a way of conveying our message to others. I don't want to give the impression that uh, you are going to uh, make this uh, your um, overarching goal that, that that spoils the whole atmosphere. You know, if you go into a conversation with the overarching goal, here's an unmuslim, I'm going to target this person, I'm going to give dawah to this person, um, you know, then it can be a turn off. And people will sense that. They sense that you have something else behind uh, the conversation that you're entering into. They won't find you to be sincere. Be sincere in your conversation. And at the same time, use the opportunities that will be provided. Uh, so if you invited somebody for a cup of tea or for a samosa in your home, uh, then uh, of course opportunities will come up. They will come in. They will see your books. They, they will ask about uh, your books. They will see all the paraphernalia. Maybe you have a picture of the Kaaba on the wall. Uh, maybe you have a verse of the Quran on the wall. They, they might ask you something about that. Now you have a chance to expound. Uh, this is how by building friendships and having conversations, you will be able to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It looks like uh, without my glasses, I can see that I've uh, done about 10 minutes already. So I'm going to wrap this up very quickly. So coming to the end now and, and to conclude, let's look at the Quran and see how the Quran actually uh, it tells us the kinds of questions that we could ask uh, others. Uh, for example, we deal with our Christian friends uh, a lot, and uh, as, as some of them have started to think about how to use a, a, a question as an entry point uh, to get through the Muslims uh, with Christian beliefs, well, we, we can think about the reverse situation as well. And the Quran actually uh, tells us what to say. For example, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ Those who said that Allah is uh, Jesus, son of Mary, have this belief. Uh, say, uh, who then uh, will be able to control anything uh, in case uh, Allah uh, decides to obliterate Jesus, son of Mary, and his mother, and all people? Now, this is uh, something for people to think about, like philosophically, it, it is a question for if, if somebody thinks uh, that uh, Isa is, is God, um, then um, how do you explain, for example, his death on the cross? When I debated with uh, um, Nabil Qureshi some time ago, um, I asked him, I mean, if you say that Jesus is God and then you say he died on the cross, uh, even though you you mean that he's the second person of the Holy Trinity, it means that uh, he is expendable because he could remain dead and the world would still go on, still being managed uh, by his father. And by definition, God is not exp expendable. So you use uh, logic and and uh, and. Uh, reasoning in in your dialogue with them, uh, introducing a question, and then you know uh, listen care listening carefully as they try to answer. Don't interrupt them. Let them answer. Uh, say to uh, your Christian friends, you know what uh, the the Trinity uh, is uh, a belief that has always puzzled me, and. Uh, 
you know, I've met some Christians, but I, I haven't had the opportunity to ask them, or I've asked them and they gave me answers, and the, and the matter is still puzzling to me. Can you, my dear friend, uh, um, enlighten me on that question? Uh, so uh, listen carefully as they, as they answer. Don't interrupt. Don't show incredulity as they're trying to explain. Just ask another question, a follow-up. Uh, so uh, from, from as the, the more you ask them and the more they try to answer, the more they try to think about it in order to compose a reasonable answer, the more they will realize that uh, what they're presenting is uh, not really reasonable, even in their own minds. And uh, they won't uh, tell you on the spot, well, okay, that means I'm taking the shahada right now. But don't ask them to take the shahada. <laughs> Don't say, okay, well, say la ilaha illallah right now, uh, because that, again, will spoil the conversation, spoil the atmosphere. Let them go home, think about it. Let them lie alone at night uh, with their heads on their pillows, with tears uh, streaming out of their eyes. Uh, as the Quran says about some people, uh, they, uh, they their, their eyes fill up with tears uh, when they recognize the truth of the revelation, uh, which has come to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, in short. Uh, let us be uh, good listeners. Uh, let us uh, listen to people as they tell us about their toothaches and other problems. Um, don't distract them. Listen carefully. Uh, talk about mundane matters uh, as they come up. And then uh, when the opportunity arises, uh, do ask them a question that will stimulate some thought uh, about uh, things religious and theological. And uh, listen carefully again to their answers to your questions and uh, come up with uh, good responses and explanations, which are there found in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran. Let us read the Quran. Let us apply it in our lives. Let our lives be good examples uh, of what it means to give da'wah uh, to others. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and uh, everyone else. And uh, uh, may, I, I'm so delightful again to be on this panel with Imam Khalid Griggs and uh, uh, Dr. Madsen. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam Jazakallah khair, Dr. Shabir, and you're absolutely right. The conversation is a chance and an opportunity that we all of us have, um, you know, in our day-to-day -day life. So Jazakallah khair for those tips and advice. So uh, with that, um, you know, just wanted to point out another uh, brilliant effort that uh, Ikna Gain Peace has been uh, has been doing in, in putting up billboards, mailing postcards, running social media campaigns on the topic of justice and racism. Alhamdulillah, we've had billboards up in cities like Bay Area, Sacramento, Houston, all over the nation. And, uh, you know, with the with the message that really pertains to the time and needs of this current society and the, the social issues. So I would really encourage uh, everyone to take some time and donate um, financially and your time in terms of volunteering. Um, so with that, uh, I will pass uh, this on to the next moderator for the next session. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.